Welcome back to the party, everyone. Mark Price here at Deathslopes.com. And in this short video, we're just going to get uh, Bootstrap installed in our project up and running. Uh, basically, Bootstrap's amazing. And no matter what uh, framework or language you're using, you should use Bootstrap. I mean, every website should really use it in most cases, uh, whether you're using Angular 2. We have an Angular 2 website at DevSlopes. We use Bootstrap. Uh, our admin app that we use internally with React, we use Bootstrap. We use Bootstrap for everything, and of course, uh, we want to embed it here in our project as well, too. It just makes life uh, so much easier uh, when developing web apps. So let's go ahead and get Bootstrap. I'm going to go to Bootstrap. Uh, I typed in boot, and it's wanting to show me women's boots. Uh, Bootstrap 4 is what I want. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to download it here. Download Bootstrap. I'm going to open it. As you can see, it's right there. And let's go to JS. So we want the bootstrap min.js because it's more compressed, a smaller file size. We don't need to look into the code itself. So I don't mind that it's compressed. So I'm just going to take this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the public folder. So in the public folder, we're going to create a new folder here called uh, CSS and a new folder called JS. And why are we putting it in the public folder? Well, the reason why we're doing it there instead of doing it here is because these aren't these aren't components. This is a, global, a globally accessible and global-wide um, frameworks bootstrap we want our whole project to have whereas remember the, these apps or not these apps these modules here okay we want to contain those together in little groups uh, so the CSS and the HTML are in their little component but not anywhere else and so we got a CSS folder a JS folder and what I want to do is just drag those in here so bootstrap min.js let's put it in the JS folder you know sometimes sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it didn't go in so we're just going to go ahead and drop it in here in the JS file. Okay, so there's the JS, bootstrap.min.js, and it's in our JS folder. And what I also want to do is, let's, let's open up the folder all together, show and finder. Okay, what I also want to do is get the actual bootstrap CSS that we need to download. So, which is right here. And we want the bootstrap min CSS. And let's just, there we go, grab our folder here, CSS. And we're just going to drag that over. So bootstrap CSS and JS are in. Um, but there's a few things I know from experience that bootstrap requires. It requires jQuery. And it also requires uh, a library called Tether, at least bootstrap 4 does, which allows um, elements to be tethered to, to one another. It's a new system that they're using for their grids. And so we need to grab those as well. So I'm going to open a new browser, and we're going to type in jQuery. And if you're wondering, Mark, why aren't we using a CDN? Uh, it's because CDNs increase load times. So I don't ever use CDNs, uh, content delivery networks. And also, some people might be asking, why aren't you using Bower um, or NPM to install these things? Uh, and we could do that as well, too. It's a dependency manager for front-end frameworks. Uh, however, this this package here isn't it's not set up for Bower, and I don't want to increase the complexity of the project. Uh, if I was building a pro, uh, a long-term professional uh, product that would go live, I might use Bower to install things like jQuery and Bootstrap. But I don't think we're anywhere even close to needing that. And I clicked the wrong thing here. Just download, and we want the compressed production version. And this one actually is nice. It's the file itself. And so what I'm going to do. Come on. And we lost our folder. That's OK. So let's go back to our project. I'm just here on my other screen here. OK. Actually, where did my JS file go now? <sighs> All right. We will get this right, ladies and gentlemen. Downloads my jQuery. Thank you. My JS. OK. So our jQuery's in, and now we just need to go and grab Tether. So let's go get Tether. Tether.io. And we're going to download the zip. Uh, 
Uh, where did you go, little guy? There it is. And we're going to go to the distribution because we want the minified version. And uh, yeah, we're going to need. We're going to grab the um, tether.min.js and we'll grab the CSS too. Um, actually, we may not need the CSS. I think we just need the JavaScript file. Uh, so let's just grab the tethermin.js and I think we're good there. Okay. So bootstrap jQuery tether. Now, uh, if we want to install it globally, we, we want to do that in the index.html file. And so if you notice here, the shortcut icon here, href equals public URL, you're probably like, what's going on here? Well, what's really cool is um, by putting this, uh, this variable in here, public URL, what's going to happen is whatever's in the public folder at runtime is going to be replaced with the actual URL that it's at, the actual path name. So you don't have to worry about path names here. You just put public URL and then drill into your folders and it will all magically work. And again, that is a feature provided about, provided to us by the React scripts package. So somebody wrote all that nice complex code to get this up and running for us here. And again, if you are interested in knowing how things work underneath the hood, all you have to do is open this React scripts look at all the packages, look at their code, see what it's doing, and you can actually follow the trail of things. I'm not saying it's going to be simple, but I'm saying you could follow all of their efforts and figure out what they're actually doing. So uh, we know that Bootstrap uh, requires jQuery, so jQuery will probably need to go first as well as Tether. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do a script. Actually, we can link this the Bootstrap CSS first, I believe. So link rel uh, equals um, style sheet, and then we're going to say href equals, and we'll do the same thing here, so the percentage public URL percentage slash, and then it's going to be CSS slash, and let's go look at our file here. It's the bootstrap.min.css, okay? So we got that, and let's go ahead and, and enter in our scripts. So script source equals, and it'll be the same thing, right? Public URL percentage slash this one will be js and uh, we'll do jQuery first jQuery dash 3.2.0 dot min dot js and we'll end that script there great and let's say script source equals public URL slash oops slash js slash tether dot min dot js Okay, and uh, that looks good. And then we'll, we'll do the bootstrap. Script source equals public URL slash JS slash uh, bootstrap dot min dot JS. Okay, now if we go back to our page, everything's probably re rendering right now, which is great. Um, I think I lost my page. Where'd you go, little guy? There we go. Let's refresh. Okay. And let's do Command Alt J or Control Alt J to make sure there's no errors. And there's not any errors, so this is great. Uh, there is one more thing that we want to do. And we want to install a tool that lets us work with React in Google Chrome so we can actually see what's going on when there's errors and things like that. Otherwise, we can't see. We can't inspect the elements because. React doesn't work the way that it normally does. React kind of creates this server that renders things. It's not like having regular HTML and CSS in your app. So you can't just go to view source uh, unless you have uh, this plugin. So uh, React Chrome extension. And we are looking for the React developer tools. And what you want to do is just click Add to Chrome. And then it will install it. And We'll just read it here. React Developer Tools is a Chrome DevTools extension in the open source for the open source React JavaScript library. It allows you to inspect the React components hierarchies in the Chrome Developer Tools. So you see these uh, these little elements here? Those would not be visible unless we had this tool here because it, does, it doesn't let you see the regular, you can't see the regular uh, divs and things you're working with. So it's very important to put this package in, uh, this extension. And so now if I refresh the page and I go to view page, or if I just click elements here, actually. There we go. So now, okay, let's see here. Here we go. So inside the div root, okay, notice that uh, in our HTML, there was nothing else. It was just root. 
But now, because that extension is installed, installed, we can see that there's an app. And we can see, look at the app header, and we can see what's inside, and we can drill down and look at all these different things. Okay, this would not be available without that plugin. So, uh, it looks like Bootstrap's installed. Uh, let's just do a quick test to see. Uh, so, one test we could quickly do is here in our app.js, just for fun, uh, let's add a Bootstrap class called container up here in the class name. And what I should expect to happen is it shrinks in from the sides uh, because that's what a container does. It has a X amount of pixels from the edges. And uh, there you have it. So Bootstrap is definitely working as you can see right here. I'm gonna get rid of that here. And of course, all we're doing here is this is a CSS class where so you can add multiple classes by adding spaces between the class names. Okay, so what we've done here is we got Bootstrap running. Uh, it's working with, uh, hand in hand with jQuery and tether.min. If we hadn't implemented those, uh, you would see warnings and errors uh, in the uh, Google Chrome developer tools. We also installed the uh, React developer tools that allow us to inspect the elements uh, and make sure that everything is where it should be. So we're making great progress. That's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com. Let's keep going.